Welcome to session 2. In this session, I will be talking about uh, infection control in high risk settings, household contacts and TB patients. Ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, it is one of the effective equipment which is available to control uh, infections in high risk settings like MDR TB ward. It is a complementary option when it is not possible to achieve adequate ventilation because of climatic changes including building structures in high risk settings such as MDR TB wards and ART centers. Proper installation and maintenance is required if we install this UVGI. Germicidal at a wavelength of 254 nanometers and the UVGI intensity of 10 micro watt per square centimeters for first 24 seconds kills 63 percent of bacilli and if it is continued for next 2 minutes 99 percent of the infectious bacilli are killed. So, it is a very effective that can be implemented in high risk settings. HEPA filter, HEPA filter is a kind of high efficiency particulate air filter. It removes infectious particles from air and it is considered where natural ventilation is not possible and risk of TB transmission and morbidity are high. Especially uh, it is not advisable in high dust, high dust conditions, but it is ideal in small room settings like the bronchoscopy suits, the laboratories and individual TB patient rooms. True HEPA filters or two HEPA membrane filters remove 99.97 percent of particles less than 1 micron in size. High risk settings, for any high risk settings uh, they should be air, airborne precaution rooms and the room layout should include signages on the doors, ensuring appropriate hand washing facilities at that places, ensuring appropriate room ventilation and ensuring directional control of airflow. And in the room, try to remove all non-essential furnitures. Set up a trolley outside the door to hold personal protective equipment. Stock sink areas with suitable supply of hand washing bags or hand washing materials and place appropriate waste bags in a bin. Place a puncture proof container for short disposal. In high risk settings like MDR wards, try to have this ward located away from other wards preferably. Adequate facilities for hand washing and good maintenance and cleaning has to be emphasized at these places. There should be adequate ventilation and adequate space between two adjacent bed which is at least 6 feet. All the patients in the ward should be taught about cough hygiene and they should maintain and practice cough hygiene. There should be facilities for adequate sputum disposal. So, all the staff should be trained on standard precautions, airborne infection control precautions and all the staff should be using some kind of personal respiratory protection materials. Similarly, in high risk settings like ART centers, they should also be located away from DMC and DOT center that is the designated microscopy center or a directly observed treatment patient treatment centers where TB patients frequently come to give the sputum or take the tablets. And it should be placed at a place where there is well ventilation or well ventilated area for sitting and waiting. Screening of patients for respiratory symptoms for early diagnosis and initiation of treatment has to be done as a mandate for administrative control and all these patients who have symptoms should be fast tracked to reduce the contact with the healthy people. Health education of cough etiquette has to be given to all the patients in the waiting area. Ventilation standards for specialized care environment has to be other to and try to avoid the usage of recirculating air conditioners in these waiting areas. There are chances of 
the same bacilli circulating through and through in the room and that may lead to more infections. Healthcare workers safety, protecting the healthcare worker is of paramount importance. Protection from nosocomial transmission, implementation of recommended work practices and administrative controls, environmental controls to improve ventilation and dilute mycobacterium tuberculosis particles in the environment, surveillance for TB disease among staff and healthcare workers to receive training in both basic concepts of infection control both pre-service and in-service. The personal protective equipment warranted in healthcare workers in high risk uh, environment and like sputum and the induction rooms, they should be using this effective particulate respirators which includes those certified as N95 mask or as FFP2 masks or greater protection rating masks. This is a N95 mask which is usually used. Masks are effective in source control for patients to reduce the production of respiratory droplets of all size, whereas the mask for healthcare workers is useful for protection from large respiratory droplets and protection of mucous membrane of the healthcare worker. Care of the household contacts. Early case detection and initiation of treatment is the most important intervention for reducing the risk of infection transmission in the household. For TB patients, all adult and child households and close contacts should be assessed for cough of any duration or any other TB symptom. Any TB contact with cough should be investigated without any delay. Counseling of patients and household contacts. Education of patients and their family members on importance and proper practice of hand washing, cough etiquette and respiratory hygiene is of very much important to the family members that has to be practiced. All TB patients to be educated on various aspects of disease. Intensive counseling has to be given on importance of treatment adherence and completion. Counseling should also ensure that patients are not stigmatized in their society or the community. And importance of proper anti-TB treatment to render patients non-infectious should be highlighted. Household precautions for TB patients. Houses and rooms where people with infectious TB spend considerable time should be adequately ventilated. Natural ventilation is sufficient to provide adequate ventilation and windows should be open as much as possible. Smear positive TB patients should spend as little time as possible in enclosed in the uh, crowded settings or in public transport till they are smear negative. Patients and family members should be educated on collection of sputum and disposal. The simple options for safe sputum disposal includes disposing the sputum in paper or tissue paper or any other paper and burn or bury it in the evening or dispose of sputum in a pot with ash or lime and bury the contents in the evening. There are some special household precautions for MDR-TB patients because sputum conversion is delayed in patients with MDR-TB and they remain infectious for a longer period. Risk of transmission in the households is prolonged and additional guidance needs to be observed. More frequent counseling to ensure treatment adherence because it is a long treatment of 24 months, treatment adherence should be emphasized. Patients should practice cough etiquette and encourage to use the masks. The family members living with HIV or evidence of HIV infection should not provide care for, should, pro, should not provide care for patients with culture positive MDR-TB because the likelihood of the patient's uh, family members contacting the disease is very high in this setting. Children below 5 years of age should spend as little time as possible in the same living spaces as culture positive MDR-TB patients and they should be followed up regularly with TB screening. The key messages are infection control is an effective strategy to reduce TB transmission. The infection control measures are to be strictly practiced by patients and healthcare settings. 
So, I have come at the end of this session. In this session, we have discussed the airborne infection precaution measures in high risk settings and the protection measures for the household contacts, healthcare workers and TB patients. Thank you.